Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips and today we're going to be building an RF tap or an RF sampler whichever way you want to call it basically it's going to be an inductive connection to the transmission line which we can then feed off some RF into our test equipment whether it be a scope or frequency counter or whatever you may use so there's a few circuits online so we're going to try one so the parts we've got we've got some so239 sockets we've got some bnc sockets we've got some bnc plugs which should be okay for rg58 multi-stranded now i bought these just in case which were 50 ohm variable resistors not sure whether i'm going to use them yet we'll see how using it without one works we've got some 51 ohm resistors so the closest i could find but they'll be okay we've got some ferrite rings thanks to jay sending me them and we've got a metal box so let's start building this so inside the metal box we've got some screws yeah nice small box should just do nicely so let's measure the size of the hole we need looks like it's around 16 millimeters so i think i've got a step cutter that will do that so after a few measurements we can measure the center point of the box get these sockets nice and centered I did have a few attempts at getting this right as you can see but in the end we got the center point which is there so that should do nicely and we've got the center point measured for the BNC so we're going to be using a step cutter like this the 16 mil so we've got 16 mil across and we've got a 16 mil on the step cutter so using my Bosch power driver so unfortunately the battery's going flat on it makes short work of this die cast box job it's not hard metal so we'll just do a test fit we just need to go one more step that should be enough Sure enough, perfect fit. So we'll do the one for the BNC. This one obviously doesn't need to be as big a hole. And my power driver is really struggling. I really should have charged the battery. So one more step for this, and that should just be nice. You can hear the driver just giving up just at the last second. There, it's died. And yep, nice fit. So there's our holes drilled. Very nice. So let's fit our SO239 sockets. So they fit from the back with a nut over the top. Just like that. 
Then we'll give them a tighten up with a wrench or something. Just so they don't come loose, but I don't think they will. Let's fit our BNC as well. So this one fits from the outside going in. A shape proof washer. And a tag for the um, outside connection. So again that screws in and we'll use some pliers or something just to tighten it up. There it is, nicely done, all in position. So now we're going to make up a BNC fly lead. So we've got some heat shrink and we've got a piece of coax and the BNCs. So we've cut back the outer and trimmed it to length and we'll just test fit the center pin. And yeah, that fits nicely. That should just be long enough. So we'll get our crimp tool and we'll crimp the center pin onto the inner of the coax. So yeah, that seems nice and sturdy. So when you're doing this, if you're putting it on just one end, don't forget the metal collar before you put the end plug on. I'm all right because I've not done the other end yet. But you can see the center pin clicks into place. So anyway, we'll put the collar on, slide it over, and then we'll crimp that on using the crimp tool. So that should make a nice tight connection. And we're going to put some heat shrink over it just to make it nice and tidy. So that's both ends done. We've got some heat shrink. So we're just going to use a lighter just to shrink it over. also adds a little bit of strain relief because this heat shrink has got glue inside it. So we should stop it pulling out in the future. And there, that's our fly lead made. So I wound a toroid. And that is a centerpiece out of a piece of coax. Now that toroid is very similar size to a T50-2, again supplied by a good friend of mine Jay, thank you very much. So we'll cut down the central wire so it should just fit in nicely across the two terminals and there it is, it does. So we must remember to put the toroid in before soldering it into place. So I'll put the, the wound toroid, it's about, I think there's about 13 turns on that. Then we'll solder it into place. That should do nicely. So that's both ends soldered, and I've also soldered the outer tag as well to the other side of the toroid. Then we're going to fit one of these 51 ohm resistors. As per the um, diagram, this is um, built roughly off the diagram from TRX Bench. So we've got 
radio on sideband, two-tone generator, just quickly um, loosely hooked up to see whether it works before we finally solder everything back into place. Yeah, apart from a bit of hum on my signal, on my um, two-tone unit, everything is working just nicely. So yeah, it's all good. Got a nice signal, nice um, trace on the scope, excellent. So there it is in its final place. I've also added a tiny little bit of glue under the toroid, some B7000, just to hold it into place. Put the lid on, added some feet, and there we have it a nice simple build nice and effective stop showing to put the oscilloscope probe directly onto the antenna of the radio and possibly upsetting the swr etc makes it a nice easy way of tapping off some rf anyway hope you enjoyed this quick build don't forget to like subscribe join the facebook group and we'll see you in the next video